Hey, hey, hey! It's your good buddy Heath here to bring you another episode of Tom Talks. I am joined, as always, by Adam Kelly, the gracious GM of Southern Tom Foolery. How's it going, buddy? It's going pretty good. Good to be here, as always. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Uh, much, much more exciting than that is Agreed. the fact that we're joined today by the voice of Aaron Vance, my good friend Zach Evans. How are you doing today? Hey, hey, what's going on, Zach? Guys? It's like been forever since you've been here, and here I am. I'm back. It's good. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's what I was going to start with. Let's just say welcome back to Tom Talks. It's been a while for you, Zach. Yeah. So I am excited to have you on. Uh, I think you'll be pretty excited for this one because today it's all about video games. Um, now, obviously, that's far too wide a discussion topic to cover as a whole. So I wanted to focus mostly on games that relate in some way to our interest in TTRPGs, though there are a lot of games out there that I know we've been excited about, so we'll probably weave in and out of that lane. As we do. As, as you do. Um, I know that the three of us in particular, as far as our group of friends, uh, really gravi- gravitate towards long, expansive, mostly open-world RPGs. Um, at least more than the rest of the STF crew. I would say that's fair. Yeah. Um, I personally find that interesting how this the genre really displays a sort of cyclical nature of time in the games like Dungeons and & Dragons and Pen and & Paper games like that were the inspiration for many of our, our early RPG video games. But due to our ages, it was kind of the reverse situation where I think in each of our cases, those were the kinds of games that paved our way to more tabletop pen and paper type games. Yeah, I think that's a really uh, solid assessment, actually, because I definitely, I don't know if I would have considered a TTRPG if I had not played so many video game RPGs growing up. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, I think it's safe to say we're all in the same boat there. I mean, it, it was it was because of earlier games, like experiences with Skyrim and stuff like that, that by the time we thought about doing this, I was even open to it, you know? I definitely yeah. wouldn't have been interested in the TTRPG, uh, you know, six, seven years ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't say that that's the same for me, but, I mean, you know, there... The 10 year difference. I don't know if it's really an age thing or just a different experience growing up type thing. You know, I mean, I've been playing computer games since I was very, very young. You know, I had the old like Commodore 64, you know, you know, like <laughs> old school I, shit. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, like DOS, DOS prompt type situation, you know. Uh, you don't. Um, so, <laughs> uh, it's like you're just digging this hole deeper. But like in high school and actually in middle school, like I never like played D and D proper, you know. And I, but I'd always like heard of it. It's kind of like this kind of magical, or there was like some lore around it when I was a kid. But I didn't have any way to like have access to it or know how to play it. But I just had like the general notion that there was pen and paper games out there so like me and my friends would like try to make up something that we thought approximated what it was you know (laughs) we would draw like little mazes out on notebook paper and like sketch little swords and shields and stuff and be like you know but we didn't know what the fuck we were doing you know like and, and then then video games became much more in the focus uh, uh, for me, it was computer games, like all the way through high school. I didn't get own a console myself until I was in college. Um, Except the but, Commodore sixty four. <laughs> well, like, so the, it was the computer version of that. In the, you know, it was it was one of those original green text computers where like everything was ASCII characters and like text-based and it, i mean it was old school i old vaguely school. remember playing like organ trail on a computer like uh, this, that at school in yeah, computer this is like lab pre-organ trail like when organ oh, wow. trail hit i was like oh dude this is dope look at <laughs> look at this you know like this is a major upgrade yeah yeah uh but yes it does it does kind of cycle back because then i got into video games and then came back to ttrpgs with a much better understanding of how to approach it you know? 
Yeah, that's that's I think the important thing to note on this is that having played RPG video games allowed I think definitely me and Heath, if not you as well, to better wrap our heads around the idea of playing a pen and paper RPG. Yeah. And yeah. so you know, in that respect, it's pretty important. Yeah, well, that's, that's absolutely accurate, I know, for me. And actually ties into, I, I wanted to ask you guys, um, I think it's kind of inevitable that your first foray into this genre, if you come to love it like we do, uh, will always be kind of uniquely special to you. So I wanted to ask you guys, what was the first game that opened your eyes to the value of RPGs? If the, I mean, I was assuming when I wrote it that that was a video game. I didn't know the long and fabled history that uh, Adam had. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> old, man. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I, I'll start, and I'll give you the answer you're looking for, because it was, it was a computer game that first got me into the idea of a like leveling progression story where your choices matter to some degree now. This is nowhere near at the level of RPGs that we have today or anything close to tabletop RPGs. But there was this series of games called Quest for Glory that was made by a computer software developer, Sierra, online. And like in their heyday, like from the late 80s to, you know, the early 90s, they were like the software developer for computers. They had like so many lines. They had King's Quest. They had Space Quest. They had Police Quest. They had Quest for Glory. They had <clears throat> Gabriel Knight, which was like a gothic horror themed one. And it was this point and click adventures. You know, you guys probably have heard of like Secret of Monkey Island, maybe. Yeah. You heard of that I, one? I, yeah, okay. I, I'm familiar with that one. All right. So Lucasfilm Arts, who made that, mm -hmm. are, is like a direct result of Sierra's birth of that genre. Okay. And so like Sierra made the first point and click like graphic adventures that at least like hits or whatever. And so they were staples for kind of anybody my age who was into adventure games. And the one that really stood out to me was the quest for glory series, which was the only one where you had a character that progressed in skills and you could pick between a fighter a mage and a thief. It was like real generic, you know, like fighter, yeah. mage, thief. And, but as if you played through the game, you had to solve the game's puzzles in different ways, depending on which class you picked, you know? So every puzzle in the game had a uh, three different solutions, you know, and it would all be like specific to what a magic user could do versus what a fighter or a thief could do. So that was like the first time I even like was aware of the concept of like, classes and skills that that boost up as you gain experience and do things and and f from that point on that's like what i wanted out of games you know that was always my favorite of those early sierra games so i was trying to rack my brain like i know i've played something back in the day uh, that was sierra and i remember and this is not my answer to the question but i just had to it was like <laughs> an epiphany um, back, I remember when I was working off of the like discs that AOL would mail to you on mm -hmm. dial up, I got, I would get in the mail little like demo game discs that had like mm -hmm. six games on them. And one of them was a Sierra game called Pharaoh. And it was basically oh, yeah. like civilization, but just Egyptian. So that was like late stage and they, they were starting to crumble as a company. And they had like a, like, is those classic story of i mean how many different video game companies of the 80s have that like rise to peak and then immediately like fall apart fall apart and so that's kind of what happened like sierra was riding like they were dominating like they, every computer game shelf was the newest king's quest game and the newest you know like it was <laughs> that was it and then missed you know, it was like the one, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lone oh, yeah, thing, I played you know? Mist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But like, uh, so yeah, so they crumbled and they started trying to do some other stuff and, and, and it didn't, didn't work. But yeah, they had a partnership with AOL and they were sending, sending out like, yeah, I got, yeah. I got a whole Sierra like six game disc and I only liked like two games on it, but I remember playing Pharaoh and because it was a demo disc, I, I had, it was the first two levels and, 
it, it was kind of like Civ Civilization that it progresses in time, and that to some degree is how you get to the next um, like level or or, or, mm-hmm. or zone or Upgrades, whatever. Yeah. Um, based on if you've achieved certain you know progress points or whatever, but I got really good at it. And I would get to the end of the second level and it'd be like, oh, you're done. That's all that's on the disc. And I never would buy the game or ask my parents to buy me the game. I just started over. <laughs> oh, man. So, Zach, what, what about you? I mean, I think some of our, you know, relatively early experiences when we first started hanging out um, kind of intermingle. But I'd be willing to bet that when me and you first started playing like KOTOR and WoW and stuff, that was not your first foray into the rpg realm uh definitely not i mean i played final fantasy 7 in 1997 that was i think my first like real rpg to like play um i did play an earlier final fantasy at my cousin's house like on his sega or something like that that i don't remember at all but uh the game that made me like aware of like classes and uh, fantasy races and different flavors and different roles for each class was EverQuest. 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 Uh, I I, I got into EverQuest. In that, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was in sixth grade when EverQuest came out. So. Yeah, I, I completely missed the boat. I didn't become friends with Zach soon enough for EverQuest. Yeah, <laughs> and I only got turned on to it by an older friend who played it. You yeah, know? it must have been. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> but I got the strategy guide, and I read that thing like front to back. Like I would take it to class with me, and just read and just study and like get all of this because the strategy guide for EverQuest had like long write ups for each flavor of class and the lore of each class and each race, and I just like remember pouring over that thing, and that is where I became aware of of an RPG in in those terms so way back in the day in sixth grade of course i've played many many uh, way back in those everquest in days. the everquest days man not like what 99 98 something like that yeah i could not this tell is you why, he, this is why <laughs> i was a little little nervous to do this tom talks because i just knew i just knew that the the age discrepancy would never be more apparent in this because like video games are so much more immediate, right? Like, well, they the music, progress so much faster. Yeah. Like you know? we have tons of musical overlap because music's a little bit more persistent, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we have similar tastes as far as that. But like games, like once games have evolved to the next stage, like most, most of the time, the older ones are gone and forgotten quickly, you know, like, you know, we have our personal memories with them, but that's all they are. It's you know yeah. what I'm saying. Well, that's that's why there's such a clamber for like those games from your nostalgic past to get remade in mm-hmm. in good ways. And we're gonna get to remakes later on, but it is interesting because it's like technology progresses so fast with video games that yeah, stuff gets left by the wayside that was like your life for a year. You know, mm-hmm. I think Diablo two probably came out somewhere around there um, yeah the first diablo was pretty instrumental for me too. see i didn't really play the first diablo but i played the second one you know that's yeah. when i started second one's the best one i i like, agree completely better yeah, than three yeah. in my opinion yeah. i mean three's fun hack and slash but two just felt like i don't know it still was real dark you know mm-hmm. like and i mean like not that three isn't but it's almost become like cartoony dark yeah, you know right and the second one, I don't know if it was that the graphics were like just bad enough that things were un- you couldn't really tell what was going on. Right, but you knew it was some blob of some awful. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> just some gore in the corner there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. It was yeah, Diablo two was was really fun. I really enjoyed that one. And I mean, that is an RPG. It is. Definitely. You know that that also counts, and it has classes as well. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. So, um, what about you, Heath? yeah, so I, I came to the RPG table, I feel like a little later than you guys did when I was like young, young, I'd say yes, <laughs> when I was really young, I kind of just played like I live with my grandparents or my dad, like off and on. And, um, I would just play whatever they'd get for me. So like a lot of my really early video game stuff was playing like Tekken 
and like NASCAR games with my dad and stuff. So like I didn't really get into the the RPG thing proper until I remember I've got a couple. Uh, definitely when I started hanging out with Zach, I got into some RPGs. But I remember our, our friend Corey Waltman, who I don't know if he's ever actually even listened to the podcast. I need to hit him up. But um, <clears throat> I remember I would go stay the night at his house all the time in like seventh and eighth and ninth grade. And he had, uh, I remember when he bought the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. And he was he was the friend, I don't know if other people have this friend, but I did, who like, he would buy games so his friends would come over and play them. And he wouldn't play it, he'd just watch you play it. So like, <laughs> I would go stay the night at his house for like two, three nights in a row and just play Oblivion. And Oblivion was like the game like that you know, really did it. Yeah, Oblivion, I've heard so much about. I've never played Oblivion. Um, I, I still love Oblivion. It's pretty dated now. I it is, well, but I still love it. I played the first Elder Scrolls. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, 200 really years old? your age here, man. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just, hey, we're talking about yeah, it. It's no, fine. No, yeah. You know, like, uh, I'm, I'm with it. I'm okay with it. But, yeah, I played the first one, um, and I wasn't ready for it. I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like, when I played it, and, like, it was pretty buggy too you know uh, like well, if you can imagine what's new yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was also it was so big it was beyond a scope of anything that i'd ever thought was possible on a computer or on a video game or whatever you know like just the scope of it like i had seen better graphics on other games and 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 that but it was just so freaking huge that i was like well i can either play this game or i can finish high school so I yeah. finished high school, you know, <laughs> like, cause it was, it could just suck you in. I, I had actually gotten, I remember I got Morrowind before I got Oblivion and I had the same experience. I was not ready for it. And Morrowind does not ha- hold your hand. It's just, just like, here's a world, go yeah. do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, yeah, I, I, it I played it time. for like two hours and put it down. I was like, this game sucks. <laughs> um, and I, I like, that's actually one of my goals now that I'm older is to go back and play Morrowind. Ooh, good luck, man. Yeah. I know. Good I luck. Know. I mean, Skyrim really fixed a lot of the quality of life things that was wrong with Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls. You games. know what, dude? Honestly, I know we all played Skyrim. We can spend the whole session. I played about Skyrim, Skyrim yeah. four days ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> like still playing Skyrim. So, yeah. But Skyrim is really showing its age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it finally was. starting to. It lasted, I mean, it had a shelf life much longer than most games. You know that the first Elder Scrolls, I didn't know this until just now, I was Googling it, uh, that it came out on my birthday in 1994. <laughs> so I imagine that that's, I probably got that for my birthday. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Would be my guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so after hanging out at Corey's and, and getting sucked into Oblivion, not long after that, I think I, uh, probably a year or two, I started hanging out with Zach, and then uh, World of Warcraft happened. Like, yeah, and we, I mean that that is a whole era of life. And but but it is I mean it's the first mega hugely popular you know MMORPG, but is still truly an RPG. Which brings me to kind of the next segment I wanted to discuss, and. Every time, I, I don't know why I keep thinking it's going to be different. Every time I go to do a Tom Talks and start researching, thinking I have a topic that's going to be easy, easy peasy, no problem, I start doing the research and it's like, oh, there's actually a lot of like debate and contention on this point that I just took for granted. So, welcome to I'll, the internet. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, like, I wanted to, for the three of us to kind of develop a working definition for what we mean by rpg because the problem is just saying the words role-playing game and if that's the only context you have i mean that could be anything you're playing a role in 95 percent of games you know yeah, so that, well, but that's not ahead. what we mean you yeah know? well let's go ahead and narrow that down to all genres could be that broad but they are kind of agreed upon to at least narrow it down to a to a smaller section of all games, right? So we can at least start this conversation and figure out, kind of get down the nitty gritty that role playing games are at least story driven, right? Yes, I, not I think sports, not sports games, right? 
Yeah. You know, not, yeah. not, I'm not going to say not first person shooters because there are some first person shooters that are role playing games, mm-hmm. but first person shooters as an action game first, that's not a role playing game. Yeah, not right. by the, not, not by the genre definition. Yeah. So like, yeah, I just don't, let's, you could play a role in Mario. I think you said that before we started recording. Like, yeah, but I, let's, let's not get hung up on that level of semantics in this. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, but that's, that's why I do want to suss out, like, what do we mean when people in the know that like RPGs when we talk about an RPG? You mentioned that it's story-driven. Sure, I think that's absolutely a big part of it. Um, For me, I think probably the biggest factor in what I would – consider like a pure RPG has to have some level of character creation, not just customization, but like you get to create your own character from a number of different classes or styles. See that not necessarily though. I think, <laughs> I I think yeah, because you don't create the Witcher, but the Witcher is but definitely the, a role playing game. RPG. You don't so, create so, your so, characters in Final Fantasy. So I would say that it's having progression tied to choice makes an RPG. PG when it comes to that like your choices are tied to the progression of your character like the power progression of your character you get choices in that you know so like because some you do get to make a character and it covers that but in others it starts you off with like kind of a base character that you mold like God of War the most recent God of War or even like um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, like I consider those role playing games. Yeah. See, th- those like beg the question for me though. Like, <clears throat> what is the difference in an RPG and a, a hybrid that has RPG elements but isn't necessarily a pure RPG? Well, I mean, because then I think you start getting into subgenres of RPG, right? Like, uh, if we're still calling RPG kind of a the uh, as an a- analogy of rock, but under rock there's blues and there's psychedelic rock and there's funk and you know what i mean Metal like, and- right right so i would say that the rpg hybrid action hybrid is kind of a subgenre of rpg because it's still to me it has some all those elements that when you think about what's bringing you to an rpg is that you have some agency over how your character gets more powerful that's like that's the appeal of an RPG. I honestly think it just has to do with it, it just advancement, right? In, in, in a more broader sense, because some some RPGs you level up, um, but you don't have any control over the way that character develops. Such it as just, it it well. Can you take, give an example? Yeah, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna give you the early Final Fantasy games, for example. Um, you have character classes, but you don't necessarily like have a skill tree or anything like that. You but get you still things at a, different levels. You the still same made way a choice you of, of what, what your progression was going to be. Right. Even if it's just the one at the initial thing, it's like, goes back to what I was saying with quest for glory. When you pick a fighter for that, the fighter has one thing that it does that it gets better at, you know, or, you know, like the same thing with final fantasy that, and, and even Zelda to that degree. Right. Another well, classic. yeah. What, what I'm saying is, I think it's just progression. Period. You know what I mean? Just progression. Period. But like, then sense. how does that not apply to something like Mario? Whereas you get into higher levels, you get more abilities. Like you know, well, you those get are just the temporarily temporary and, power ups that are available in the level. That's not like you don't get um, a raccoon tail or a cap in Mario, and you can just put it on whenever you want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So permanent progression. I would say permanent progression. Permanent progression. Well, <clears throat> permanent, like, incremental progression. Yeah. And, and one of the things, as I was doing my reading, that made me think about it is this notion of going from, like, from when you are level one being equivalent to, like, a badass commoner to when you get to max level, you're basically a god. Like, that's kind of a, a, an element of, of all RPGs, for the most point, is that you get, you feel your levels so much by getting them incrementally every single level. Yeah. I would, I would agree with that. I so incremental, that. So, incremental, incremental, permanent progression. There you go. All right. What else, Heath? What are some okay, other elements so, of RPGs? <clears throat> um, one, uh, just <laughs> according to the old Wikipedia, uh, is uh, 
an emphasis that, that RPGs as a genre have are exploration and the concept of quest. So like not just having a storyline that you are going through with no control. You just like having control of your levels, you have control over the order in which you do the things that allow you to progress. So basically having a main quest and a bunch of side quests and, and, you know, other, uh, you know, other quests that you can choose what order you do them. Okay. I would say mostly, I, I mean, I don't, I, again, we're going to get way too buried in semantics on this, but okay. We'll go with that. Not all have like um, branching narratives, but I think they definitely have a quest based system. Like, start the quest starts small and gradually become more and more grandiose, right? Yeah. And maybe to what you're saying, Heath, that there's an element of being able to explore the space of the game yeah. as opposed to being like, on a side scroller where there's not, you can't get off the level, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, exploration in general is, is a big thing that is constantly mm -hmm. brought up with RPGs. The fact that you can explore the world as part of the game, even if you're not doing a quest. Well, and it's almost part of the challenge of the game. Cause I think back to Zelda, you know, one of the original RPGs where you don't know, you don't even have a quest really. You just start and you have to, you have to explore to find out what to do, you know, like I'm talking about the original Zelda here and in like up through to like Zelda four before they started even trying to give you some hints. And I mean, I'm even playing breath in the wild now and it's, there's not a lot of guidance. The, it, it encourages you to just walk around and find shit to mm -hmm. find it. You know what I yeah. mean? And like, I think that of course there's a quest kind of layered in there, but it's so vague, you know, that, that's that's if there's a spectrum of it, I guess the Zelda is like fully in the like, here's the world. Good luck kind of finding it as to something a little bit more streamlined, like God of War, where it's like, yeah, you can explore around the edges, but you pretty much always know where you're supposed to be going next mm -hmm. in that game. Yeah. All right. Next element. Do, do you have anything else? Because that's kind of the, the big ones are exploration and quests get lumped together having a, you know a, a defined set of quests or quest path as well as separate from that being able to explore a world more um openly that's not to say necessarily that an rpg has to be open world right like right. it can have zones that have limitations that you can explore um like uh, that that would be the case with zelda like it's not just a a world that you just go anywhere Right out the gate. I mean, it kind it kind of is. I mean, the problem is, is that you very quickly get to a part where you're incapable of surviving because the monsters are too strong, or you don't have like a particular like defense that you need. But like, there's nothing stopping you from going into a place. You know, there's no like hard like invisible video game wall saying you can't go here until you're leveled up. What it is is you just start getting encounters that you can't beat. You know. Yeah, which I was gonna bring up loot, but I th I think that loot ties well, into progression. No, that's right? that. No, it's separate, and that was my next point. Was it seems at least incredibly common that there will be a loot system, um, not only for like consumables and things like that, but especially in most of our more modern RPGs, like you have different slots for each like piece of armor mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that's one way in which, like, uh, Assassin's Creed has been RPGified in the last few years, is they used to just, you had a full set of armor, and they added more RPG elements to where, okay, now you can constantly be collecting loot, kind of like a looter shooter, but you're also, because you have five different, like, armor slots, you can interweave those however you want. So does, does an RPG, requ is it required to have a loot system akin to that? I would say most do. I would, but you can also tie it into progression, in in a way. I think, you know, I think it's hard to do the type of story of an RPG without having loot. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's so baked into the that type of 
you know, adventuring, you want to find stuff. That's the whole point of being on an adventure to yeah, some I mean, degree, you because, know, like, and that's because they stem from tabletop. RPGs. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like that, that has been so baked into the like skeleton and the, the core of building an RPG game that I don't think anybody's ever even considered not having some form of loot in the game. You know? Yeah. Well, and to, to Zach's point like that, I can see how you would uh, lump that in with progression, but it's like two sides of the same coin. Like yeah. in mi- in many RPGs, your progression is two different elements: how you uh, choose to get better loot and and what you choose. Even that has a lot of choice. Usually, like what weapons you use are choices that you have. What kind of armor, light, heavy. That's why I think choice medium. is somewhat important in in as a, as a part of a RPG. Like as part of the, I was saying at the beginning that the f- there, I do think that choice is a huge element to RPGs. Yeah. You know, it's like role playing game. Like the, it's, it's trying to get you invested and having some agency over the character that you're playing, you know? Yeah. So, but, <clears throat> but to what degree of choice do you have to have? Like what separates, I, I guess we've kind of already answered this, but like uh, choose your own adventure stories have choice in how you go about the narrative, but they don't have the other elements of choice that we're talking about. Well, you're talking about like choose adventure books. Well, yeah. And well, and there have been video games that have been made based on that style as well. Yeah. But those aren't RPGs, right? Those are choose your own adventure narratives. They're barely games. You know, I (laughs) I think of those. Well, I mean, and I don't mean that disparagingly. I just, they're Those interactive. Uh, they're interactive stories. stories they're not. Yeah. yeah, they're not like a game that's built on like any game elements. You know, a game has to have like a challenge or a puzzle component that you're trying to overcome, and a bit of luck to be a good game. You know, a, bunch, a bit of randomization, I should say. And and I mean, those are those are just clever tricked books. You know, like. I don't. I don't consider those RPGs at all. Like you're okay. talking about the tall, the Tall Tale games or whatever. Uh, Telltale games and yeah, stuff like tale, that. Tale, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Those aren't RPGs to me. Okay. So, so I mean, I guess that's my question though. Is like, do you have to have those elements of choice in your gear and your? Um, I don't think your it has leveling. To, no, I don't think it has to be. I don't think it's as specific as that. I just think that. RPGs can be characterized by having choice at some point along the way about how your character interacts with the world instead of kind of playing it as an observer as far as who your character is and what's happening to them and you're just playing the mechanics of it like you're there's going to be inhabiting the character you're I mean, inhabiting the, the yeah. character in a role playing game yeah. and that you're making some choice along the way that's yours to make for that character and it's going to be at least a little different than somebody else's choice even if it's as simple as "Ooh, i prefer the boomerang in zelda over the sword or i prefer the white mage over the red mage in final fantasy whatever you know like Mm -hmm. because those are all pretty streamlined yeah choices but you get you get to say hey i'm making this choice so now you feel attached to the character yes i think yeah i think that's an important point to make you know is that those choices that you make let you embody your version of that character because you're mm-hmm. inhabiting that character in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I guess that's why um, it was something I was considering that I brought up earlier about games like God of War or like a, a, the modern Assassin's Creeds or whatever that have a lot of elements of that choice, have RPG elements and stuff, but I didn't don't know whether or not we would classify them as pure RPGs especially considering like well if you put the that, qualifier pure in front of it no yeah sure <clears throat> but <laughs> but i mean my my point being characters that are already prefabricated for you um as opposed to being able to make your own character based on the templates that are available there to you there are plenty of rpgs that your character is already an individual yeah. like all, you know what i mean like no one can argue that the witcher is not an RPG, right. the Witcher games. No one can argue that. But Geralt is a person. He yeah. is. He's very defined. He's person. very defined. However, within that, because you get to make choices about 
not only Geralt's like skill tree, but his armor and weapon choice and the decisions that he makes as he's going about in the world. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it an RPG because you're playing your version of Geralt. So I don't think that you can you can say you have to be able to create a character or it has to be something from scratch. Yeah, like, like if you're playing one of the Iconics in Pathfinder, it's a character that's already made that you can play, but you're still playing Pathfinder. You're still playing a tabletop role-playing game. Yeah. And I don't think it's any different when it comes to something like The Witcher, you know, or, or God of War 3 or something like that. Okay. I mean, well, I just, I'm not trying to like beat a dead horse on it, but it, it is something that like, for me, I prefer to make my own character. It's definitely it makes a type it far of, more engaging. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I agree with you on that. Like, it's definitely a preference type thing in, in a, a subgenre of, you know, I guess is of the more like robust character creation driven RPG, like Skyrim or tabletop or, you know, something like that. Like, yeah, I mean, that's what I like. That's what I prefer. But man, there's been so many quality RPGs that are centered around a named hero that I love too. You know? Yeah. Well, it seems like, uh, particularly in the last few years, that there have been a lot of games uh, or even like long existing franchises that have gone with that kind of model of like taking a character that is already well defined or whatever, but adding RPG elements into the game that didn't used to be there. God of War, like we said. Um, has uh, more of like a sk- skill tree and stuff like that than it used to have. I think with video games, it's remarkably more difficult to give the players that much choice because you, you have to still like construct scripted events without, without screwing it up. Yeah. And so if you give character players too much control of their characters in a video game, then there's a real potential of them trying to do something that you haven't written for as opposed to a tabletop role-playing game where you have a lot more ability to improvise and use your imagination to sort out what's going to happen so like i think as it went from tabletop to digitals you know representations of what all these game designers were doing when they were kids it's like they tried to do as much of that as they can but you know you got to give credit to Best, best, I can never say their name. Bethesda. Bethesda. Bethesda, thank you. Um, and Blizzard, uh, for, for their ability to create a engine that can handle such a wide range of character choices. Cause that's, can't be easy to do in a, in, within the confines of a digital medium, you know? A video game is going to constrain you in ways that tabletop is not because they can only program so many variables for each different thing. You know what I mean? Like you, you end up making choices, but each of those choices are from a a set. Whereas tabletop, you can make some absolutely wild choices. But then I was thinking about it. And if you've ever read an AP, Paizo will write like, if if the player does this, it's beyond the scope of the adventure. And so that's like their get out of jail free card. They don't have to worry about programming that in. You, the DM, now have to worry about programming yeah, that yeah, in. Yeah, you, well, you and know? they give you the option, but I think that's a valid point to bring up because I was thinking of that as well. That like particularly if you're playing APs, it is a little bit more like being within the relative confines of a video game because like there is the world that they have constructed to exist in this AP. Now you can certainly homebrew and do whatever you want outside of that, but that requires extra work on your part. Got to patch it as the gotta GM. Yeah, you got to put that mod on it. Gotta, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so video games can't can't do that on the fly based right. on individual player choice. You right. know. So you are a little more limited. In well, I, yeah, and I don't say do. that to like bring up like, oh, well, this is why tabletop is better than video games. It's it. I bring it up to say I understand why a lot of developers choose to have a defined persona at the center of their game, so they can write a story that's fun to play through with a protagonist. Because the thing is about AP writers is that they have to write a whole story with zero protagonists, you know, like, yeah, because the protagonists are different for every person that sits down to play that. And so like video games, I mean, they're like, no man, we want to make movie 
style experiences that have like kind of a beginning and an end even if it's expansive you know you put 200 hours in it still has a story that's being told and that's you can't not you can't tell those kind of dramatic stories as a video game if the players are making a a character with their own whole backstory totally different you know that's just not possible you know like they can't account for they can't bring the story the character that you create into the story Unless they say, this is the character who's in the story, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Well, and I think, uh, pr- you know, a lot of AAA games lately have had that situation and have done really well. And I'm glad that games like that exist. The Witcher 3, which I'm, I just a couple weeks ago beat the main story. I've still got one more DLC. Uh, but that game's fantastic and I wouldn't disparage it at all just because it has Geralt as opposed to somebody that I created. And like I said, God of War, Assassin's Creed Odyssey did it, and and they were a little more hammy with the story. But <clears throat> those those are good things, I think. It's just a preference that I like to be able to create a character. But I do think going back to Skyrim, like that's like there are games that have done it well, like that you can completely create a character however you want and still have an engaging. I mean, with Skyrim, a ton of different engaging narratives that have a beginning, middle, end. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, the uh, that's one thing that's, that made Skyrim so replayable is that it's not just the main quest and a, a you know, main quest line and a few side quests. There were long ass 10 hour, you know, quest lines for that you could totally everything. walk by and never see. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it was just a really well developed world that felt lived in and alive. But, you know, to be fair, when you play Skyrim, you, who your character is represented by their power level and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, the, who, the narrative stuff doesn't change based on who yeah, you are. Yeah, you are often just kind of an observer in the landscape of the stories that are going on. Yeah, you like do the things and you and you go and assassinate the person, but nothing's ever your idea, right? And like your your per- there's no like personal story being told about your character. It's more about you're being a hero going to help a bunch of different people. And so the personality that defines your character and all the customization is, you know, how did you come up your skill tree? What kind of weapons did you go for? What kind of build did you go for? It's the the identity of your character in Skyrim is purely mechanical in my opinion. You know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you you, ha- you do kind of have a set, like, you are the Dragonborn in mm-hmm. Skyrim. So mm-hmm. that is sort of... Yeah, that one main quest. Y- you that know, thread. It, and, yeah. well, you, you become, you know, the the head of the Mages Guild or the head of the Assassin's Guild. or Yeah, but that's not a personal story. It's not a personal saying. story. Yeah. So what I'm saying is you are defined by what you've done in that story. Like, you're referred to... By your titles, you know, yeah, um, and not like your individual. Um, there's name. there's not a lot of personality involved with it. Right, but there, there is a, uh, an acknowledgement of accomplishment yeah. through something like Witcher. Less so with Assassin's Creed, because I'd say Assassin's Creed. I mean, it does have a good story, but there's a lot of it that's kind of just filler, fun, you know, action gameplay or whatever. But like. Trying to think of another, like, Last of Us tells a really personal story. And I'm not saying that that's an RPG. I don't think that that is. I feel like that's that's an adventure game, you know, a horror survival adventure Mm -hmm. game. I don't, I don't classify that as RPG, but because I can't think of another better example, that's what I'm talking about is that with that story, you're getting a very personal story about the character that you're playing because there's, there's tons of them that are that way, man. Yeah. I'm but trying to still think about have RPG. Uh, <laughs> the, any of the Final Fantasies after you know what yeah. four or five, like, like or God of War, like the the personal story of Kratos. And yeah, like, you're playing yeah. these specific characters' stories yeah. out. So yeah, yeah, you just get those more kind of internal growth stories in something that's where the writers get to have a little bit more control over the narrative of the character. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. So I guess as far as like RPGs and video games, because like we talked about the cyclical nature that they come from TTRPGs, which TTRPGs, what they do best is they do allow, you know, three to six or seven or hell, I've heard of people playing with nine or 10 people 
but they allow each of those people, depending on you know how much your GM caters to it, to have a personal story arc, mm-hmm. to have a, a personal progression of story. Um, so, well, I think that's the you know you're talking about the circ the circle is like well that's what then brought us to tabletop out of video games is because we were obviously craving that ability to invest even more of ourselves into the character. And so when something gets put in front of us, when we like actually stop and take a look at it and we're like, Oh shit, like I, we can, we can do this. Like I can make this character whoever I want and still have a meaningful power progression. That's fun to like interact with mechanically. It's like, Oh, where's this been all my life? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it was there. It was there. We yeah, just, I know. I know. The, the, the sti- I, maybe the stigma. The stigma. Of it, you know? Much, much, very much so, you know? And Well, and like life too, sometimes sure. it's yeah, just like, I mean. like I, I just wasn't in a environment where that was even something that was being presented well, or talked about. I mean, for about, many years, you know? we all, we all played in bands and, and yeah, I'll so say we were the, so fulfilled the music that, scene is, yeah. is, is so comprehensive and, and, and it's just enveloping, you know, like if that's something that you it's dive into, life, that's man. your whole life. It's <laughs> yeah, your whole yeah, life, man. It is. Like, I, you know, what was funny is I was almost a theater major and everyone told me, don't be a theater major because it'll consume your life. That's all you'll have time for. And instead, I was I was a musician, and that's what consumed my life yeah, for several it, years. Yeah, it does. Like when you're like doing it hard, like with like one band, and you're like really trying to go for it and everything. Like it, that's all it is. That's your that you wake up <laughs> thinking about the band, doing. the Well, band. you're also spending time going to other shows. You know, yeah, supporting yeah. your uh, other fellow local musicians. You know, which is how we met. Um, like, so. I don't think I was sober enough for the first five years of Chance Fisher to sit down and fucking play a game. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, and I mean, I drink while we play now. You've heard it. All of you've heard it. <laughs> cheers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, but I mean, man. like, yeah, I, I was just in no, I was in no place to like sit still for that long during that time. You know, like it was just so much going on. It's funny, though, that, like, you know, Zach mentioned being a theater major. He didn't want to do it because it's all-consuming. And then he got in a band and realized it's all-consuming. And then I think to some degree, once me and Zach uh, weren't in a band anymore, right around then, or not long after, we started playing TTRPGs. And then we started a podcast. And now that's our all-consuming thing. Yeah, Yeah, right. (laughs) And now we listen to other podcasts that we want to support, like their other bands. I will say that... As far as all consuming things that I have experienced in my life, the podcast part of it seems to be the most healthy and sustainable of, <laughs> yeah. of the ventures. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely the least um, taxing. You know? Yeah. Gives me more time for video games. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what we were all looking for all along, wasn't it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a circle, man. Yeah, <laughs> flat circle. Yeah. Um, so I guess I want to get into kind of what the word hybrid RPG has been thrown around a lot. And like, what the fuck does that even mean? Because like, we're, (laughs) we've been kind of trying to define like what an RPG is. And even that conversation is like amorphous to some degree. We've got a few guidelines, but like that term has become more and more and more popular the last few years so like what would we consider like what is a hybrid rpg is it a a game that belongs to another genre but then uh like just incorporates a couple of elements so a hybrid rpg or things that are rpg hybrids i actually know this pretty well it's anything that has a progression system or character choice uh, tied to it, even if the gameplay isn't what you would typically associate with an RPG, even if it's not open open world per se. The new God of War is a fantastic example of this because it has progression, uh, it has loot choices, it has gear that you can choose to equip, you can upgrade your weapon trees in certain ways, but it's not an RPG in that traditional sense. Uh, even freaking Call of Duty has elements of RPGs tied to it. You're, you know, you level up, you unlock new loadouts and, and change. See, in that case, in that that. case, I would want to disconnect RPG from that. 
I, Call, I, of, Duty, I Call of Duty has a loot system, you know, which was kind of originated in RPGs. But I, I would right, not well, say how, that Call about, of Duty like, is... Let's do it from Call of Duty. What about Destiny? That's where I was going to go as well. Because we've, all, we've all played Destiny. Yeah, so Destiny is at the edge of a RPG hybrid, in my opinion. Like... I think it could or could not be depending on what, what side, like what, how you play Destiny, I'll say, you know, like mm-hmm. what you play Destiny for determines whether or not that's an RPG hybrid or not. You I know? would, I would absolutely argue that, that Destiny is an RPG shooter. Not Borderlands. So would that make it what a about hybrid? Borderlands? That's an RPG shooter. I've never played Borderlands. So oh man. Know. It's, it's, you have, a loot based progression you have mm-hmm. a skill tree based progression you level up you follow a character class that you choose on your story uh, but you shoot instead of hack and slash i think yeah. both of those would qualify because i mean destiny like you have a skill tree it's it's kind of a limited skill tree but you have a skill tree that you're progressing through until you get to x rank or whatever um and and you're progressing your weapons constantly um, and then the same same deal for Borderlands. Like you you change what you pick a class in both of them. Like you said, because mm-hmm. like, you can be Titan Hunter or Warlock in Destiny, and you pick what skills you want of the limited options as you go along. I mean, they're I think they're absolutely in the hybrid RPG. Like they they are shooters that have been RPGified. You know, that have had elements added into them. From I guess what the I'm RPG. saying is. Is Destiny an RPG hybrid or a shooter hybrid? You know, like, what is it? Those aren't separate things because hybrid is two things. Well, but, like, hybrid is crossing two genres, right? And yes. so, like, and so that's so, what that's so what shooters those, and RPGs. That's it's what it is. It's an RPG shooter. It is one half RPG, one half shooter. So you can say it's a shooter hybrid, or you can say it's an RPG hybrid. Right. right. So, which one does it lean to? Which umbrella is it on the skirt of? Is what I'm saying. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like that. I mean, I, that, that's something you care about. But like, I'm just I saying, think it's is the it marriage, a hybrid? Right. It's it's the marriage. It's it's more of a Venn diagram type situation there. Yeah. Gotcha. So, okay. what about we mentioned Assassin's Creed? Would you consider that a hybrid? Because I think I think I would. I mean, it's got exploration and stuff. But it doesn't have a lot. It doesn't have any choice in your story, not really. Yes, it does. First not of all, much. Okay, not much. Not much. All right. Let's. Are we talking about the new ones or the old ones? Because the new the, ones, the obviously. new Assassin's Creed Origins Odyssey, especially Odyssey, is a one hundred percent RPG. I'd say one hundred percent. It's an RPG. an RPG. You have to call Odyssey because an RPG. Assassin's it's Creed Odyssey thing. is just a love letter to The Witcher Three. Yep. Is what it is. You're abs- You have absolutely. It's a. There's a branching narrative. You have individual choice in every cutscene. You and multiple cutscenes. You have a skill tree based progression. Hell, you, you have, have two loot. different characters you can play in Assassin's Creed, even though they're the same uh, well, character. They're, they're, yeah, they're two different. <laughs> now, Odyssey. Odyssey beings. is not even a hybrid. It is. It's an RPG with elements of parkour. See what what <laughs> hangs what hangs me up on that though is that yes you you technically have choice in your narrative but there's only like four times in the entire game where that choice affects anything at all. Well that that's on the developers for not having, you know. Yeah, so but I'm saying if it's only four times out of the 200,000 goddamn choices you can make that it has any effect whatsoever, it's it's 100% an RPG. I agree. I agree with hundred percent. I'm with Zach on this one. If yeah. if Witcher three is an RPG, Assassin's and it Creed is Odyssey is an RPG. Objectively, it's an yeah. RPG. I think they're both objectively RPGs. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. Yeah, like no, no, not even a. We shouldn't even be debating this right now because the science is settled. <laughs> yeah, well, because because they both they it does have like not only the the gear based progression and and diversity, but also like you pick skills. I would say different that skills. The, as you level up that the lack of impactful choice in assassin's creed would be a criticism that you would make of it saying this is an rpg that isn't good for this reason you know rather than saying this isn't an rpg because they didn't do this well it's like they just kind of they made an rpg game and didn't give you as much choices 
they could have, you know. Yeah. Well, and that's but, and that is a criticism I, don't think I have, and I love that game. Need, like I, I don't think that narrative choice is what makes an RPG, man. Because we can talk that they're like all the Final Fantasy games. Near Automata is undoubtedly an, an action RPG. You know, um, the like I said take the Final Fantasy 7 remake. You guys haven't played these, but you really make so few choices and they amount to nothing. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. that is absolutely an RPG. You know? I agree. So, I agree. If, and that's, if that's the case, I, I wish that you guys had played some of these other RPGs that, I, that I've played so that we could have oh don't worry we're gonna the- get we're gonna get berated by the fucking community real hard oh because so. we're, we're gonna miss i mean so many games we're we're trying to find common threads of rpg games that we've all played yeah. Shoot, we're still defining the word gentlemen i mean like- uh, <laughs> <laughs> here we are so well, can, what are some other examples of hybrids i mean that those are i think the ones we've laid out are good Bioshock. i mean surely there's others I, i've never played i played like an hour of bioshock I don't know anything about Bioshock. Well, that's like that's like a shooter. You know what I it's, mean? It's a shooter RPG hybrid. That's what I'm saying. Like it's that goes under the shooter umbrella, but it's a hybrid for sh- for for a shooter because it has lots of RPG elements. You know what I mean? Like you make a lot of choices about how you're you level up in that. As many choices as you make in Destiny. Well, okay. So let let me try to like rein this in a little bit. To to our main discussion, the thing is, about a lot of games now are they're they're adding in elements of what an RPG is because players like that element of choice of customization mm-hmm. of progression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for you sure. Know, which is, I think, what ultimately leads you to t- tabletop, right? Yeah, because it's the ultimate expression of that. I I, I agree with that for sure. And I think that there, as, as any art form, any medium, you know, video games have certainly, I think, taken their place at the table as far as that goes, that eventually there comes a point in the progression of the different stages of it to where it becomes like this combination of all the different stages that were came before it. You know, if you look at art today, it's all of it's a mixture of abstract realism, impressionism. Like there's not, this is even music, like all like music is kind of crossed over lots of genres, you know, like indie rock is also electronica is also dance music and sometimes also rap. There's, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's less now about, Hey, this is the thing that we're doing as Let's take all these things that have been done and put them together in new and interesting ways. And video games are doing the same thing. So yeah, your point, I really do like how you put that because at the end of the day, we're seeing the best parts of all games blend together in new and really fun games that are, that are learning the lessons from all the different individual genres. We will be playing tabletop in VR someday. That is a thing that will absolutely happen. You will you will plug in your your VR headset and think of like a dreams style. Mm-hmm. DM creates a world. The characters inhabit that. I'm telling you, like eventually that'll be, and then it's going to get way out of hand. At that well, it's point. just going to turn gonna, into fucking LARP. Like, God yeah, damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it eventually will be. Absolutely, yeah. Guys, there's a movie I need you guys to watch called Mazes and Monsters, and it talks about the dangers of getting too absorbed in tabletop role playing games. It's got Tom <laughs> Hanks in it, and <laughs> and at, at the end of it, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it for you guys. At the end of it, he's like on a bridge about to jump off because he thinks he's his character from the game. And his mm-hmm. friends come up to him. And this is a pretty young Tom Hanks, as you can I imagine. I don't even want to entertain like, this yeah, conversation it's like one of those any satanic further. Panic, uh, no, it was. Yeah, it absolutely yeah, yeah. came it out was of ba- that. It was based on a book that was a direct result of that. You know, I just, I just want you to picture Tom Hanks. You know, that Tom Hanks like kind of like ugly cry that he does a lot in a lot of his movies. You know, like th- I'm thinking about Big or something like that, where he's just oh, like, yeah. "How did I even get here?" How did I even get here? You know, that, that's the end of the movie. So you don't have to Dude, watch it. Oh, 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 man. I mean, yeah, probably just like YouTube. The, the yeah, just YouTube that, that call scene. Call it good. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good. <laughs> Mazes and Monsters, man. 
cautionary oh tale gosh. about the dangers yeah, it's, of how, how hilarious that that's one of the blights on Tom Hanks' career <laughs> is, <laughs> is supporting that garbage. Yeah, yeah. This had to have been like one of his first roles, you know. If yeah. not his first. <laughs> hey, man, you got to get that money somehow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's hard. It's a hard industry. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, I don't. How even, did we get here? I, I don't even want to <laughs> get into the fucking here? questionable choices actors have made early in their careers. Oh, uh, that's a different Tom talks. <laughs> <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> it's a Tom Hanks talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. It's a Tom Tom talks. We're it's pivoting. A Tom Tom talks. <laughs> well, there's going to be two Tom Tom talks, and one's about Tom Hanks, and one's about the Tom Tom Club. No, that'd be the Tom that's Tom 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 Tom, 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 Tom talks. talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, oh my god! We got ideas. We got ideas for days. Yeah. Oh man. The, the pivot inside the pivot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, the pivot inception, right there, dude. <laughs> so, uh, okay, we we'll, we'll, we can get off of this RPG thing in a minute. Uh, I was gonna say, of, of the things that we've laid out that kind of make an RPG, is there any one of those elements that is just like the not defining element, but the element that you as an individual like more than any of the others. Like I said, I, I really care for character creation a lot, even though it's not necessary for an RPG, but it's something that like makes a game really special to me. I agree with you that, yeah, I love character creation. I mean, I guess that's kind of why I got into MMOs. I think it's why I like... Dark Souls so much is, you know, the character progression and customization in that. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a, a really, really important element for me is kind of deciding the kind of character that I want to play and being able to have the freedom to create that within the system, you know. So I do love um, character creator uh, RPGs. Absolutely. I'm right there with you, man. What about you, Adam? I like, okay. So I like mechanics and story relationship to be super tight. So like I, my favorite part of like what makes a really good RPG to me is that as I'm progressing as a character, it's tied into the story. Like my powers and what I'm getting feels like it's coming from what I'm doing. You know, like, flavor wise like i really like to see oh shit like i like back to the mega man days i took out this this ice boss and now i have the power of ice in my hands you know what i mean like that kind of thing i mean I, as you guys have played with me for a while in ttrpgs yeah every time we level up i'm going to tie your level up into the story somehow that's what that's my shit dude that's like that's what makes RPGs fun to me is that like, yeah, character growth, powering up and everything, but because of this narrative driven energy, you know, I love it. I, well, you know, referring strictly to our campaigns, that is one thing that I've really enjoyed doing is finding a narrative way to justify, you know, every power game increases. Skill. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and I think it's something that we, really strive to do uh in our in our ttrpg games is yeah. to like make that make sense as best yeah. we can well and the, the funnest part of that is when it's like something real wacky that it's like yeah. you gotta find you gotta get real creative you gotta you really know? get creative and find a way to because like you know i mean titanium mike for example it's not very hard but yeah he's been punching for fucking 40 goddamn episodes he got better at punching guys <laughs> like, surprise surprise uh, uh, but, but like, I think you did them, a good jo good job of tying your like feet tree choice and like how you're building Mike into the narrative of this protector. This you know, I mean, for Christ's sakes, the Apollo Protection Agency. Like, yeah, his bodyguard. Know? Yeah, his so, bodyguard feet. It, right. It's, so like, it's funny because I've got like I like name external elements of his life and then just build off of that. So like APA, obviously bodyguard feet, and then in harm's way. Um, but like, also, like, I mean, it, I've called him the toughest goddamn vest anybody's ever seen. So, like, from second the or third level, I took from, toughness. You yeah, know? yeah, from the get go. So you you've built Mike out 
as a soldier that Mike would be without a doubt. Like every, every step of the way, I think just further entrenches Mike and who he is. You know what I mean? Whereas I've found some way to narratively justify the crazy, wacky options that I've found. Yeah, because well, you're a mystic, so you get all yeah. this weird ass shit, you know, like that's supposed to just come to you in the middle of a dungeon. Div- you know? Divine inspiration, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, uh, honestly, um, having a like a, a follower of a deity in in that really helps facilitate that a lot sure and i think yeah. it's not not exclusive to my character but to any any ttrpg yeah. character i think just general advice is if you're playing a magic user of any any sort or really any characters can benefit from having a deity because it gives you so much narrative resource to build your character it gives you direction for your character things to strive for and you know See, that's, that's something that, like, I really haven't done much in my history of gaming has been, like, a, a very religious character. Even my characters that were religious, it was just like, okay, I follow this deity, mm-hmm. but, like, I didn't really tie it in that much. And that's something I do want to do in the future if I get another, a chance to make another character is, like, use that guideline. Like, have a religious character and have him so rooted in that religion that I build the character in that way because it's it, the deity thing has just been, like, fluff. Anytime I've had one. Well, speaking of your characters, I have a surprise question for the two of you on this uh, on this subject. Okay. Okay. So, what video game would you like to see your Aeon Throne character in? Oh man! Oh, dude. I mean, probably Borderlands. <laughs> like or Titanium Mike, Mike in Borderlands or yeah. Destiny as a Titan would be because I just yeah. punch as much as I could. I'd go full melee abilities. Mm-hmm. I could see well, that. That's good. <laughs> well, honestly, when I first was looking at creating a character to play Starfinder, I really I based Orin off of a Voidlock in Destiny. I mean, that was sort of like <laughs> the flavor. I was like, I want to make a Voidlock, and here's I think the closest way that I can do that. Um, so I, I can't deny, you know, that was a major influence now, but you ended up making a radiant lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the I, yeah I, I know. Right. Yeah. But like, that was, you know, like I said, that was my initial, um, inspiration, but yeah, absolutely. He is definitely more of a radiant lock now. God, now I wish there was a way for Mike to get the hammer bro super <laughs> and just start throwing sun hammers like crazy. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I thought uh, it was curious where, where those characters would lie in, in video game land, you know, you know what yeah. we haven't talked about that just, I just thought about, but outer lands, I haven't played it, but I feel like the outer rele- worlds, I'm sorry, outer, outer worlds. worlds is relevant to us specifically as Starfinder. I know Zach, you have yeah, felt like it's, it's the closest really thing to lo- Starfinder like, as a video really, game. It's low magic. I would love higher magic in that, you know? And I'd also like a longer, more open. It is kind of short. It's is a, it? it's it's kind of a short one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's Skyrim in space. It is not, and and then Starfield, which is the one that Bethesda is actually doing. I just I don't trust Todd. And I don't trust Todd <laughs> anymore. So I um I, I have my doubts about that as well. Well, don't worry. There's Cyberpunk coming out. So that's that's yeah. That, that's I mean, can we at. can we just can we talk about cyber? <laughs> I was at some point going to ask you about either like actually current or like upcoming games that we're interested in, but I knew that was immediately just going to be cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, see, cyberpunk is, it fits all the criteria for an RPG. It is an RPG. It's based on an RPG. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. based on a tabletop yeah. RPG, you know, which like- is why it's going to be so great. You know, yeah. give me a, Give me a, a Starfinder game in the style of Cyberpunk. Give me a Pathfinder game in the style of Cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, I would play it, you know, <laughs> in a heartbeat. But I'm very, very excited about Cyberpunk. It's going to be awesome. It's. It, I think everybody listening to this already knows this. They're already. If you're not hyped for it, you should be. It's going to be dope, you know. Mm-hmm. We'll be discussing it on air before episodes. I guarantee it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm excited it. about it, but, but you know, it's it's harder to like 
deeply discuss a game that's not out than one that you've actually at least gotten to play for a couple yeah, hours. But there's oh. going to be a. I think that you know Adam has mentioned this several times. That Signal of Screams has a little bit of cyberpunk flavor to it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it'll be a um, good timing for that. Yeah, it'll yeah, be- and we're getting into that, so I am really excited. I I've never played the cyberpunk tabletop. Me either. You know, I'm I'm aware of it. I'm aware of what some of these the different classes and things are, but I have never actually sat down and looked at the the core rule book or anything of the sort. So mm-hmm. it'll be my first foray into the genre. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I mean, is it? I don't know a ton about it other than what I've seen from like E3 last year or whatever. Was it E3? What, whatever the one that Keanu came out and fucking... Yeah, that was E3. Did the, last year. <laughs> you're breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> oh, what a what a meme, man. What a fantastic meme. So yeah. wholesome. Such a wholesome meme, Keanu. And he's such a good dude to be like such a fucking action star. <laughs> to, like to play the characters life. that he plays. Yeah, yeah, No, yeah, no, absolutely. not to play the to that He does all of that shit. Like he does all the gun fu shit like in real life. Like he does. Oh yeah, all he's that like he's he's very skilled with with all the weapons that he uses, and he's uh, like an amazing person apparently too. So he's got it all. Yeah, that Keanu. So we're pivoting to the Keanu Reeves fan club <laughs> podcast. I mean, Welcome like everyone. it's. It, I mean, it is kind of the you know we went through the reconnaissance over the last you know a few years ago, and now it's kind of the Keanu sense <laughs> the last couple of years. Uh, um, yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, but I mean, he is it's like a super awesome dude that like it's a miracle that Hollywood has been able to keep their fucking mitts off him to a degree that they don't corrupt him. Well, All right. fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. Right. We're rooting right. for you, Kiana. Don't let yeah. him get you. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> in, in summation, we're excited about cyberpunk. We can't wait to spend some time with Keanu in virtual space. Right. Uh, are there are there any other upcoming games that any of you guys are excited about? I, I'm not like to be honest. I love the video games that I love, but I'm really not like a diehard video game guy that keeps up with news. Like I don't I know about Cyberpunk because if you play video games at all, you kind of have to know about it. But I don't I Last don't know about any other. Last, Last of Us Two. Yep. yep. I've I I've, I've mentioned this to you, this to you guys before is that I've never played The Last of Us, but I've watched three or four different of my friends play for hours on end. Like I've never. So played you know it. who Joel and Ellie are. You understand yeah, yeah. the situation. The setting, yeah, I stuff. get it, but I've never even touched the controller. While Have the you game seen the whole on. story from start to end? No, not the whole thing. Yeah. It's good. It's real good. It is good. Uh, Ghosts of of Tsushima. Have you guys oh, seen yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's coming out the month after Last of Us. It's I don't I'm not sh- I don't know how many RPG elements it's going to have in it. It's definitely an open world game. It's going to feel like an Assassin's Creed game, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, but it looks really good. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to that as well as Last of Us. And I think Cyberpunk is kind of the other one that I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. Uh, Baldur's Gate three on computer. Oh, oh man! Yeah. Oh, so that that's what I was forgetting. We're talking about RPGs and how they relate to TTRPGs. And me and Adam haven't even talked about that. We've been playing uh, Divinity. Divinity Original yeah. Sin too, that's which like is the just, best representation it, of tabletop role playing game on a video game. That's yeah, the best it is, one. Dude. It really like, is a, the perfect marriage of the two. And like, yeah. it's funny because uh, Adam and I both have played that game solo because we were so excited about it and neither of us really care for playing it solo but playing it together and getting to like strategize and you know if we're playing together we each get to control two characters Mm -hmm. um and and kind of determine what what they do and and how we want to do our takes on those characters but it's so much more fun being able to strategize with you just in the in the combat if nothing else yeah like you really it has a super tactical but fun like it's like Really fun graphics and animations and stuff, but it's turn based, so you have some time to think about what you're doing. It feels like you're playing tabletop because you got these dailies and stuff that you can do. And it, I don't know, it's super awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Baldur's Gate. I, I haven't picked up Divinity, so I, I mean, I've heard good things. You know, you guys rave about it, 
but I haven't actually played it myself, so I can't comment on that. But Baldur's Gate looks really good. It really scratches that itch of like, like there's been times when me and Adam were like, man, I, you know, if a session got canceled or, or put off a week or something like that, they're like, man, we wish we could play. And it's like, well, we could play a D- Divinity Original Sin, and that's close enough. Yeah, we'll knock out <laughs> a four know? hour session, like, boom, we just played some D&D kind of. <laughs> yeah, the, the only problem, like, is it's funny because we play so many TTRPGs and stuff. And like you inherently have to be patient and give people their time to do everything, but like we're play we'll be playing Divinity and catch ourselves like he'll run off and talk to somebody and I'm not seeing it go down. And it's like, hey dude, we gotta all see this. Like, yeah, the thing you is, know, it's chill like, out. If, you, it's, if you split, you can't hear what the other person's interacting with, oh, you know, okay. the NPC. So you have yeah. to be around them, you know. Yeah, you got to choose to like at least overhear their conversations. Just like a stuff. tabletop game, right? Right. You can be on <laughs> you can be on completely different sides of the map. You know? Well, but as opposed to a tabletop, you're gonna hear it no matter what because you're all in the same space. Like, sure. nah, yeah. I could be just like going over here selling some loot or whatever, and he's having a whole fucking <laughs> quest conversation you know, 50 yards away and I didn't even know it. And it's like, oh, what are you doing? God damn it, you're talking to somebody, Adam. <laughs> I want to know what they had to say. Adam's trying to keep it moving. Keep yeah, moving. well, that's that's the danger of like, even though we know it's like a TTRPG m- marriage of, of a video game, like it's still like you're playing a video game so your brain switches to like, okay, completion, 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 you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah well, and like you take for granted that there's a lot of – RPGs where the NPCs don't matter really, you know, like other than the ones that have a gigantic exclamation point over their head, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you don't stop and talk to every NPC in the street in Skyrim, for example, or, or, or anything like that. You know, you talk to some to get a feel for the world, but eventually you start blasting past those. Yeah. But in Divinity, like every NP- NPC has a potential storyline and potential loot and a potential influence on what might happen somewhere over here later. You know what I mean? Like they've done, they've done their work to make it feel as close to being around the table as you can with the limitations of it. It's fun. It's real fun. And they're making Baldur's Gate three, which is going to be that plus a few years of video game development on top of it. Plus in the five E system, which I'm familiar to five E, yeah, right, right. So I'm like saying. it's gonna, be, it, I, I'm gonna know what everything does instantly. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. in Divinity Sin, we're like, we're okay, figuring stuff out. Yeah, we're like, uh, what does this spell do? Let's try this out a little bit, you know? Right. Like, oh shit, that blew up the whole fucking town. Let's try and not do that again, you know? <laughs> Isn't Kingmaker very much like that but with Pathfinder? I um, haven't played it. I've been wanting to play Kingmaker, but I, I don't think, think Kingmaker is more like original Baldur's Gate. I'm not sure that it's turn-based. Oh, okay. I have no idea. I've, I've been wanting to play that forever. Um, uh, and it's hard, what? from what I heard. It's, it's very, <laughs> I, very I hard. I believe that. Yeah. Well, Divinity yeah, gets really fucking hard, too. Yeah, I'm and, sure. like, I'm further in my solo game than we are in our game, and I don't... I'm at a point that I'm like, I don't know how you do this, because I went evil as fuck and killed every single fucking townsperson to get all the experience that I could. And still I'm like, how, how can I beat this? How can I possibly win this combat? And I'm not that far into the game. Yeah, That's a good game. <laughs> yeah. One thing I like so much that they do though, and I'm not, not taking too long on this or whatever, but is that like the whole, elements of stuff that are on the ground yeah. affect everything so like you might have ice or like blood pools of blood on the ground and like i play the conjurer in our game and if i you can summon totems that like ping damage every turn or you can summon like a, a summon you know like a creature mm-hmm. and yeah. if you summon them in blood in the blood pools they get different bonuses than they do if you summon them in the ice or in fire like yeah. in there. Uh, okay. And they get all that stuff is very and different cool. abilities and stuff too. Like and like everything, like all the magic is tied to a particular damage type. So like there's geomancer magic and there's pyromancer magic and arrow thurge and like you know like and so there's a whole spell book for each element you know and then you there are ways to like mix those things and they interact with each other. Like all the status effects on the battlefield like matter if it's wet. 
you don't want to be around somebody throwing some lightning damage because you're going to get screwed. Because it'll, it'll hit everybody in the party yeah. if the, the rain is wide enough. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's that's good. that's an element I don't see a ton. I'm sure other de- games have done it, but like I haven't played many games that have that, and I just think it's such a fun little wrinkle of like adding into the strategy without it just being more moves that you have to make. Yeah, it's not just an add-on. It's part of the the technique of the combat. Like you mm-hmm. you need to learn how to use status effects to be good at the combat. You know, yeah. I don't see that so much in tabletop. I, I I would kind of like to see more. I of think it. it's all about it in two E. I think two oh, E sure. is that's the name of the game. You know, mm-hmm. is is status effects. And but, I was going to say that two E feels things like cast a water spell to make a creature wet, and then cast a lightning spell afterward to do double. I damage. mean, it's not quite as simple as all that, but I really do think that there is like combo strategies in 2e the way that the feats interact and the different skills interact and like the way one person can set up another person to have a more meaningful impact with their turn you know what i mean like but that's the sort of thing that i'm saying that i want to see like it it just bugs me that i can't cast grease on a person and then cast overheat the next turn and it do more damage because they're greased up you know i want to do that kind of stuff right Okay, well, I've I've only got a couple more, like, little questions for you, and we can get out of here. Okay. Um, Do you have, like, a sleeper RPG or, like, uh, an RPG that maybe was underrated at at any point? It could be an old one or whatever that that you thought didn't get enough love that was really good. I mean, I'm not cool enough to know the indie games like that. You know, well, yeah, <laughs> like the, that, all the ones see, I can think of thing. got like tons of recognition in their day. I think there's some that have gotten forgotten, but like it's, they're also not really relevant today either. You know, like Ultima was a huge, Ultima Online was like a huge deal because it was a massive world before World of Warcraft, but it just wasn't the same kind of level that World of Warcraft was at. But like Ultima Online was like one of the first like, living worlds you know to the point to where the guy who created ultima like those games he had a character in the world that you could like come up to and he had like built himself some armor that made him pretty invincible you know because he's the damn programmer of the game but literally there was a plot to assassin he was the king in this world the creator of the game he was like he kind of the king and every now and then he would come into the game during special events and he would do things and and the world would change or whatever there was a whole deal where basically that king got assassinated he his character got killed by somebody who figured out how to work around his like god armor that he put on and killed the king of ultima and that like became the lore of of the game going on and then shortly after oh, world yeah. of warcraft came out and like that was, and that was that. that, was that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was going to talk about WoW at one point, but it's too late now. Uh, uh, just suffice to say, like, WoW was huge in my, like, getting to TTRPGs. Like, I played WoW for years. and like Never played. I was an altaholic super bad because I loved creating new characters and trying new fighting styles and stuff and never getting to fucking even halfway to max rank, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, uh, I, that missed me. For sure. Not me, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I you had, you had some time. good times. I did. I had some great times. I, I, I've had some uh, really enjoyable uh, times. I, I, I probably wouldn't pick it up again now. Well, it's kind know? of the thing that, I, at least I know me and you, our experience has always been like, when we had three, four, five friends that were all playing for a new expansion or something, we'd all get together for like a couple of months and fucking jam out on it. And then as soon as one or two people fell off, it fell apart for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, because I mean, it's that's a hard game, game to though. play by yourself, you know? Yeah. I don't think it's nearly as fun, but I don't think there's a lot of games that aren't nearly as fun without friends to play with. You right. Know? So, um, which is. Uh, Partially the best part of, of playing tabletop with you guys is... Well, that's also is, a good thing about RPGs, like, particularly big open-world single-player RPGs, is that you can play them alone, and, ha- you, I mean, you don't have the option to play with another person in games sure. like Skyrim and stuff like that, but they're still incredibly fulfilling time sinks, mm-hmm. 
you know? I mean, none of us, like, put down Skyrim because we couldn't chat with our buddy about playing Skyrim. They have they have a mod now for uh, Skyrim. Skyrim Together, I think is what it's called. And you can play with up to, like, seven people. That's once. just crazy. Whoa. Yeah, I think Mind it's pretty buggy, blood. but, it's, <laughs> but that sounds That sounds super... Like, I mean, you guys just go in and wreck a whole town for no reason. Yeah, you know? yeah, you do. Like, you, you definitely do. I saw a guy on YouTube who had seven people... And they decided to do the Assassin's uh, the Dark Brotherhood quest. And <laughs> so the main guy, he walks in to, the, you know, the kid, uh, what's his name? Aventus Arentino in Skyrim, yeah, right? Yeah, that's he somebody in the Dark you. Brotherhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy goes in, and then one of his friends runs in and just suplexes the kid. <laughs> <laughs> He just boom, lays him out on the floor, and he's like, okay, great. What are we going to do now? Uh, wow. So, yeah, you can definitely derail your friends. That, yeah, that just sounds experience. like the only appeal is the chaos of it. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Jesus. That's all anybody plays Skyrim for now is the chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, it's it's a thing now. Okay, so I know you, Zach, have, have you beat the Final Fantasy VII remake. I have, I have, I have yeah. finished it. Yeah. But I mean, first I was, of all, how how did you enjoy it? Was it everything it lived up to be, or was supposed to live up to? So it's contentious among the community. I personally loved it. It's not necessarily a, a complete remake of frame, the original game. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a tower esque turn of the tower, if you will. Turn of the wheel. Yeah. That uh, we get that. I don't think everybody else is. Well, that's I, fine. I don't want to spoil good. it. No, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think purposely encoded there a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I will say. Uh, well, if you don't get that joke, go read seven fucking books, real. Yeah, quick. and then yeah. you'll totally will, get it. Yeah, and your nipples will yeah. get hard and hurt as you read them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, not everybody's gonna get that one. It's just a weird. <laughs> but the, but those who. Those who were there, they uh, get it. Yeah. Okay, so that said, I mean, I never played the first Final Fantasy VII. My entry into Final Fantasy was eight, which is itself a contentious, like, is it a good game or a bad game? Um, I loved it, but it's cursed. I swear to God, I am cursed with that game. I've been trying to beat it since I was 12 fucking years old, and <laughs> I have... I think four different times now gotten halfway through it and either my third disc would fuck up or the time that I like downloaded it there was a corruption halfway through it I've never beaten the game and I've played it five six times at this point I would say just get on YouTube and just you know watch watch the last no, few hours I'm, I'm gonna beat it one day one they do day, have I'm a remaster out now with like oh, slightly better graphics you know yeah I mean not that great. Uh, I would oh. I would love to see like a, a good modern graphics version of that. But that ties into my next question. Are there any other RPGs or just video games in general that you would like to see a, a good remake or reimagining of? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. I mean, you already got your Final Fantasy VII. So. I did. I'm like, I can die happy. Like, well, I need the rest of the story is what I need. You know, I need the next two games. I want a remastered and add it on to KOTOR, or I want a new KOTOR. Like, single-player mm, Yeah, KOTOR. absolutely, man. That Not, would be... I mean, the MMO was fun. I never got, like, super far into it, but the, the only reason I played it is because it had... It still had the similar, like, story, like, elements that mm -hmm. KOTOR had. I didn't give a shit about the, like, doing dungeons aspect, you know? But I want another single-player KOTOR experience. I would just try to make Orin... In Kotor, <laughs> if there was like a new Kotor yeah. that came out, I yeah, would try my be best to like, yeah, to create that character. And that, I don't think they could do a like frame for frame remake of that because I do think some of the um, uh, leveling up systems are kind of out of date now. They'd have to figure out a new way to do that because I never loved uh, and I love Kotor. It's a foundational game, probably the first big RPG I played. But I didn't like that you start as one class. You do like up to like seven levels of that class, and then you switch to what Jedi class you are, and like it's the combination. You have to be a Jedi. Can you have in, in in Kotor one. You have to be a Jedi. Okay, I don't. I mean, I always did it because duh. Now you can. I mean, you can choose not to use lightsabers, but you will go through the story narrative of becoming a Jedi. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you now, don't. You ha- can I mean, choose to use guns all you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I always. I think you guys probably know this. I mean, it's a Jedi. You if want I to have be a, a Jedi. chance to use a lightsaber, I'm going to use a lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Paizo, for adding uh, solar connection al- alternate class feature. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, mm, thank you. Mm, came out just in time. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, and that's that's the thing about Starfinder being, I mean, it's still relatively new. I mean, we're a few years in, but it's still a pretty young game. Uh, I mean, D&D has been around since the fucking 70s, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see what else, what other, like, tropes and and elements from other sci-fi stuff they'll pull in to to bring it full circle you you asked uh what i'd like to see a remake of and to bring it all the way back to the beginning about me being old i'm so old that the game i want a remake of has already been remade and it got remade into svga graphics that was the remake do you know what svga graphics are (sighs) no okay so (laughs) Let me Google it real quick. All right. So it started with EGA graphics, which was like the first like color graphics that you could make on a computer. And then it was VGA and it got into like 16 points, you know, 16 color graphics. And then there was. So is that like original Doom? No, dude. Would that be SVGA? Oh, yeah. Original Doom would probably be SVGA. Yeah. Okay. So there, before that, it was like real blocky with it when it was ega and like so quest for glory came out originally as ega and it's like so like slippery on the screen like when you're moving <laughs> it like i wish there was something i could relate it to that you'd understand but like when you when you because it was before there was even a mouse really and so you'd use the keyboard to you know to move and they would just like it was such sticky move like quick turns and then they would just fly across the screen you know, cause there was so very little control of the processing speed. It was just, this is what it is. <laughs> and so, yeah, that game got re, I remember being excited when they're like, Oh, we're making, we're remaking the first quest for glory in bright new SVGA graphics. And I was like, <laughs> yes, I got it awesome. You know, um, it's everything I've wanted. Uh, but like, you know, honestly, no. He, he got his remake in 1999. Yeah, seriously, like <laughs> seriously. But like, there was then some people recently. I think like five years ago, took it upon themselves to remake Quest for Glory two in SVGA graphics and better graphics. And that was like recent. And that was like some independent project. You can go to like Quest for Glory two remake dot com and like get it you know and play it and uh you know so like as far as other games i mean they're already remaking everything already you know or they're just making the sequel to it they're just you know yeah okay i want a new elder scrolls game that's good you know or Mm -hmm. a new fallout game that's good well but those are just franchises well that's what i'm saying like if i think about my video games that i've played like when I was playing RPGs that were old that would need a remake, they've already been remade and they're so like dated that there's no point to remake them to modern graphics now. Like it wouldn't even be the same game. Like you can't have the experience of that game now because it was like point and click, you know, and like, and you had to like, <laughs> if you wanted to look in a tree, there was a text parser and you had to put type in, look at tree, you know, <laughs> like. Okay, you know, okay. So part Adam's it, old, we get it. Well, no, but just to give you the idea of what I'm saying, like, that was the game, is, like, you had to figure out what the command was to get the, to figure out what to do. Like, so you'd go up to, like, a stump, and it'd be like, look at tree, or look at stump, and they would do some snarky mm. little text bubble would come out, it's just a stump, you know, and then, like, <laughs> kick the stump. Your toe is now swollen. <laughs> you know, like, like, <laughs> so it, it would try to like anticipate what people would type, but you know, obviously it wouldn't be able to know everything, you know, cause they have to you script to guess all the that. Password. You had to yeah. guess the password. Yeah. Like every, every puzzle was like, and like one of the features of those old games too was random combination of objects. Like th- there would be no logical reason why it worked. It was literally you'd go through your little inventory bag and you'd have like, a peacock feather and like a stone and you'd combine them together and that would solve the puzzle and it would have no con like it was just it was like they were 
Maybe this is where I get my streak of DM so brutality. It was a bad with, game. <laughs> that was like <laughs> they were such. They were just trolling their players. You know what I mean? Like the, it was this weird thing where it's like none of the puzzles could be easy ever, ever, ever. I mean, it, easy is one thing. Logical is right, another. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, fuck I'm that so game. glad that <laughs> I that did game. not grow up playing that game. I'm so glad they were yeah. amazing. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like they weren't. Anyways, yeah, I mean, I think that's it, guys. I just wanted to really shoot the shit with you guys, mainly about RPGs, why they led us to TTRPGs. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, one yeah. of those elements that that got us there. Um, so I appreciate both of you guys being on. Uh, you guys, is there anything special? We need to let the listeners know it all. Yeah, Adam. we can. There's a couple. There's a couple things. Um, first of all, there's no listener questions this time. Talks. That's because we in, we intend to take mostly listener questions for our book three wrap up, where we get the whole group together. So that way, you guys can get all your questions out about book three when we have our big wrap up. Secondly, I would like to officially announce our partnership with Norse Foundry Dice. Um, they have been so kind as to support us and and hook us up with some dice. And we actually have some dice to give away. There'll be more details on that probably out when you by the time you hear this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to them and say thank you for, for yeah, their support. Absolutely. And for you guys, what that means for you, if you don't know already, you can go to their website and you can use the discount code STF to get Fifteen uh, percent off your purchase, so I that's, mean that's, that's a pretty good deal. Bad. And that's they make not bad. they make some real pretty dice too, man. And who whoever gets those giveaway dice, look, you're fucking lucky because I wanted them. Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'll let them go to the giveaway. They're my favorite color and everything. Like, you can have them. <laughs> They're nice. They're nice. Um, and then yeah, that's uh, that's all I got. So is, is this going to be out by the time we do our our live stream? Yeah. Yeah. This is going to come out before the live stream. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, then we should probably hype the live stream one more time. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hype it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, go for it. Uh, what is it? The 30th? Is it the 30th? I don't even yes, know anymore. The 30th. Yeah. Uh, the 30th, 5 p.m. Central. Come check us out. We're going to be uh, hanging out and uh, streaming yeah. from the comfort of our own individual homes this time because right. the Rona. And uh, we'll be on Twitch. We- but we'll provide links in our Discord and all that kind of stuff too. So if you need to find out where it is, just hit us up on on Twitter or Discord or wherever. Um, but it will be on our Twitch channel on that date. Because and the reason we're having a live stream is because the finale of uh, of season one of Against the Anne Throne. We're going to be dropping a big chunky four hour episode sixty nine. Yeah, on everybody. Uh, immediately after the stream it's a good one it's a good one and uh so we'd like to we'd love to see you there with us hanging out you can talk shit about video games with us if you want <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean we can we'll we'll already have some of that going on prior but yeah you can do that anyway yeah join the discord if you're not already in the discord if you're listening to tom talks you're not in our discord why yeah I agree. please join that's all, all i right. got that's all i got boys Fade cool, us out, cool. good job good job all right. Well, we appreciate all the listeners. Um, like we didn't do listener questions, but we'll get a big one next time. Um, and honestly, I was just scared to even try with you guys having more video game knowledge than we probably do combined. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Thanks for being here, guys. Zach, it was good to have you on again. It's been a while. Me. Yeah. I'll try to get you on more, uh, more frequently. How about you come back next time? I'll be on the next time. one. Yeah, watch come yeah. back next come time. On, come on next time. I'll be, I'll be in the next one, yeah. Yeah, next time, you know, the the big every fucking buddy's on it pain in my ass Tom Talks. Yeah. I really liked, what was it, the first Tom Talks yeah. that we had everybody on? That was that I'm was a sure great I'm sure you one. did. Not be- <laughs> because I was on it, but just because it was a fun thing to do. Yeah. They're just, they're like, those are just chaos for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're fun, though, because I love all you guys. Anyways, we'll see you. We'll see you. Thanks for coming to Tom Talks. We'll fucking see (laughs) you.